Hey, Shalom, Akiam, Shalom, Call Halal, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shabbat, Hashem, Rakah, Kudash. Send double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to Yahweh out there pushing the word to Syria and true. This is Brother Ariala. And on this lesson, I just want to talk about how, you know, there's a sentiment that, um, you know, everybody has the access to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Heavenly Father. And, you know, because of, uh, kind of like Christian church and everything like that, you know, people truly believe that they just can develop this, you know, one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with the Heavenly Father without kind of going through channels and means that the Most High set up. And on this lesson today, I just want to kind of talk about, you're not going to get past the, the, the prophets. You're not going to be able to get around, you know, having to deal with the prophets, the prophets of the Lord are a position where they are because the Most High, you know, has his chief servants and he's going to prove the humility and obedience of the rest of the nation through them. And it's a very, very important office in the sense of us reaching towards immortality. And if, if, if the bulk of our people are just not going to receive it, you know, a lot of times us in this flesh, in this truth, knowing and understanding a lot of the things that the most high is saying you know we get frustrated with the way that our family treats us the way that our friends in the world treats us you know just just the lack of kind of respect and reverence that the prophets receive of, or just the duty of the ministry you know because there's an understanding from the ministry you know that this is where the most high is dwelling and that the access to the heavenly father goes through this you know like this household this body and so I wanted to talk about that and highlight that in the scripture. And just, you know, for those people who are listening, for those people who are new to this, you need to make sure that you understand that what the prophets and the men of the Lord are doing is extremely valuable and important towards salvation for the whole nation. So let's start off with the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter. We read this chapter all the time. It's such a powerful chapter, highlighting 144,000. But... What I wanted to do is just kind of make sure to highlight certain aspects and mindset that's written here and touch on it in, in other scriptures. Here in the book of Revelation 14 and 1, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on, Mount, on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. Now, of course, that's talking about Yahweh Shah, but along with him, a body that was given to him, a group of people that was given to him. And, you know, these are those men that the Most High had with Yahweh Shai since the beginning before the foundation of the earth even was created. They were with the Lord creating everything and, ta and taking on the duties of, of building the blueprint of the earth and what we understand is this tangible life, right? Revelation 14 and 2 says, And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, right? And they, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now, these people, these men, these 144,000 were redeemed. They were bought back from the earth. And no one could learn this song except for them. And when we break down what this song is, this is talking about the gospel. This is talking about the truth. You know, this is talking about really the, 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 the intention and the will of the Heavenly Father. It's being sung and being repeated by the 144,000. No one else was given this song to learn. That's extremely important to recognize. A lot of people think that they're going to be able to receive the gospel or receive the song just on their own volition. No, unless you're a part of that 144,000, you're not, you're not receiving this song just on your own. It's coming through. It's channeling through Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, his men, and then to the nation. You're not going to skip his men and just go straight to Yahweh Shah. That's not what the Most High said. We're reading the scripture here. So either the Bible is true or you, or, or, or you are true. I'm going to roll with the scriptures, okay? I'm going to roll with the scriptures. I'm going to pull a couple of uh, precepts to this. When you go here to the book of Psalms, the 40th chapter, and you go see, we start at this top. It says, uh, to the chief musician, it's a song of David. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry, right? We always talk about the house of David. 
And the Most High is inclined unto those who are coming into that umbrella of the house of David, which initially is going to be the 144,000. Through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, things have been opened up for them. This is going out to seal those men, right? Verse 2 says, He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set uh, my feet upon a rock and established my goings, right? It said, and that it alludes to uh, Peter and the whole house, and uh, the house being established. We can go. Do all that or the chief cornerstone through Yahweh Shai. Right? Verse 3 says, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Now it says, even praise. That new song is likened unto the praise of the Heavenly Father. Right? Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the, that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Right? So through these men. That we're reading about, the 144,000, this song is going to go out. And that song is only going, to, only going to be given to those men. When you go back to Revelation, the seventh chapter, Revelation 7 and 1, it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So no destruction is going to come, right? It, it's been that those winds are being held. To, to not blow on the earth it says verse 2 and i saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living power of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads right and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they and there was sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So these 144,000 are set to be sealed, right? And they're the servants of the Heavenly Father, meaning they've been sent out, right? The Most High has always had his servants, the prophets, right? When you go to the book of Jeremiah, and this is all over, over the place, but I'll just read Jeremiah 15. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. Saying, Return ye now, every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers, but ye have not. Clined your ear, nor hearken unto me. We just read that there's going to be a few men that they are going to incline their ear. That 144,000 are going to be inclined. They're, they're going to be sealed. Only them are going to be sealed. And, they, and they're going to be the servants of the Heavenly Father sent forth. For, for people to come hear the word and trust in the Most High and repent, you are not going to be able to skip a, past the prophets. <laughs> you, you know, the prophets are going to be able to receive their, are going to uh, need their just due. And there's so many people that think that they, they, they F the prophets. Well, I don't like the way y'all say it. I don't like the way y'all bring it. I, I have a personal relationship with the Most High. I don't need to, 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 to basically reverence or bow to the prophets. So to speak. And it's not about bound to us. It's about bound to the spirit or the ceiling or the word or the glory that the Most High has given the prophets. That wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is a part of the glory of the Heavenly Father. And to take heed to the prophets is to come closer to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So respect is, to, is, is due there. Okay. Now Isaiah 42 and 8 says, I am the Lord. This is my name and my glory is. Will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images? Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring up. I do tell you. Now, we talked about this name. When you go back to Revelation 14, what does it say? Having their father's name written in their foreheads, right? You come down here. It's talking about new things springing forth. How, how is it going to spring forth? Verse 10, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that there, uh, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. All right. So all of the, these of this message has been given to the servants, the prophets, to go out to speak to the people for salvation. You're not going to just be able to skip around that. A lot of people think they're just going to be able to skip around the idea of taking heed unto the prophets. 
in that respect. So you have all these people, and that's why the scriptures talk about, you know, a prophet shall be not, not known in the city, basically where his hometown, the people that's close to you, they're not going to reverence you and respect you as the prophet. So sometimes that's a stumbling block. That's why the scripture's talking about you, if you don't hate your mother or your father, oh, you have to be willing to kind of put that off right now to serve and focus on the business of the uh, of the ministry. All right? Now, I want to go back before we get some other precepts. I want to go back to Revelation, the 14th chapter. Let's go back down to uh, the fourth verse. It says, These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are uh, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High and to the Lamb. So these men, these these guys, these these these, 144,000, they were uh, redeemed, right? They were redeemed. We can go to that word, you know, just real quick. Redeemed, or uh, or gazo, right? To be in the marketplace, to attend, to do business there, buy or sell, uh, you know. He says of idle people to hunt the marketplace, lounge there, right? So we go out to the Agora, to the marketplace, right? To speak this word. But we are being bought back itself in the market of the spirits, right? And so the Most High has set forth the prophets to to, to be put in good case in that time, man. Right? These are the, 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 the men that are going to be the first fruits of the Most High. We always talk about those first fruits, and it's a very special appointment. Very special appointment. Strong's G, 536. Aparche. Aparche. Now it talks about Aparche. It says to take away the first fruits of the productions of the of the earth, which was offered to the Most High, the first portion of the dough from which sacred bread loaves were to be prepared, hence term used of persons consecrated, to the Most High for all time. So the 144,000 have that appointment of being consecrated to the Heavenly Father for all time. Hence, subsection 3 says, persons superior in excellence to others of the same class. So these first fruits are superior in excellence by the, the washing of the uh, of the word, by the uh, sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made. They, they're superior in excellence to others of the same class. They are the elect, the chosen. Those separated from the rest of the nation of Israel to have the appointed duty to receive the first parts of the glory of the Most High, His knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and to impart those on those who are set to believe. All right. So going back, going back to uh, Psalms 40, right? Psalms 40 it says, 43 it says, and He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise to our power. Many shall see it in fear. And shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to the owls. Many, O Lord, my power, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. Right? If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears has thou open burnt offerings and sin offerings has thou not required what did he want he wants our ear our obedience us hearkening us listening us being humble right now look what it says in verse 7 then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me i delight to do thy will O my power yea thy law is within my heart right though it for lo he come in the in the volume of the book we read, we reading here in uh, in the book of Revelation, Revelation, the fourteenth chapter. I don't know why it's doing that. It says they follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth. Now we can get the precept. We say just you know the testimony of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is the spirit of prophecy, which is read here for lower coming the volume of the book. There's another precept to that in the book of Hebrews. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna just continue on. But the point is. Those men are going to be sealed with this word, so they're going to follow the Lamb, whether so ever he's going through the prophecies, through the words of the Heavenly Father, man, guided by the Holy Spirit, right? Verse 5, it says, In their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. So the Most High has uh, justified these men through the Spirit. Now check verse 6. It says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, saying, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth 
and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Sing with a loud voice, fear the Most High, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the, and the fountains of water. And there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen in the great city, because He made all nations drunk on the wine of the wrath of fornication. The whole point of what I'm saying is, is that this gospel. This ceiling is first going to come to the 144,000, then to be dispersed out to the rest of the, of the world. That is our duty. That is the job given to the prophets. When you go here in Romans, the 10th chapter, and let's start at uh, verse 10. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right? This belief unto confession is given unto the prophets to go speak out to the uttermost parts of the earth. Right? For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? It says, so So all of these people that believe are going to begin to confess or call on Yahweh. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So there needs to be hearken, uh, hearkening ears, right? And how shall they hear without a preacher? To hear something, the mouth has to speak it to, for something to be heard. A preacher has to be sent. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, right? So the whole appointment of the 144,000, this ministry, to go out, preach this word, all right, to go out and preach this gospel of peace, salvation, repentance to salvation, isn't it an extremely important administration, all right? When you read in Titus 1 and 1, uh, Paul says this, he says, it says, Paul, a servant of the Most High, and an apostle, an apostle, apostle, <laughs> Of Yahweh Shahamashiach, according to the faith of the Most High's elect. All right. And the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. In hope of eternal life, which the Most High, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of the uh, most high our savior God our savior to uh to Titus my own son after the common faith grace mercy and peace uh from God the Father and of the Lord Yahweh Mashiach right our savior it's so the whole point of what I'm reading now is that this word is manifested through preaching so if you're not willing to listen to the word that's coming from the prophets how are you gonna come close to the heavenly father through belief you have nothing to confess. You're not going to be able to get around those who were sealed. Those who were sealed were given the word to go preach. <laughs> this process and the mindset of the Most High has never gone away. Okay? So this whole idea that people have that they don't need to hear the prophets and they yeah, everybody can individually go and create some type of belief on their own volition. The most high dealing with me. He dealing with me. It like like we always say it's 143,999 and then your special ass. No, that's not what the most high said. Alright? You're gonna have to humble yourself at the feet of the prophets. That's why the scripture says how beautiful are the feet of them. Right? Going back, let's go to Isaiah 52 and 6. It says, therefore, my people shall know my name. Who's going to have the name of the Heavenly Father written in their forehead? 144,000. That's how you're going to learn it. Right? Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Is, is he going to come out the cloud and speak? So warm up. It's time for you to wake up. I saw you playing PlayStation. I just want to let you know you're an Israelite. And this is what you need to do. And, you know. You turn you turn you turn off the 2K. Con Lord. No, man. The most I sent the prophets. Okay? 
Verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, as that gospel, and bringeth good tidings of good, and publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy power reigns. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, that's that confession. With the voice together shall they sing, that's that new song. And they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people and hath redeemed Jerusalem. That was, that, that's how we know that that redeemed, that being bought back, is a people before it's a place. Because the 444,000 were redeemed from the earth. All of these things you have to be able to put together through the Spirit. But you're not going to be able to put it together if you're not going to listen to the voice of the Lord, which is being channeled through the prophets. The prophets are, are furthering that mediation that Yahweh started. Okay? That mediation that was through Yahweh is being channeled through the prophets. When you read Galatians 3, 20, it says, Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but the Most High is one. <laughs> okay? Is the law then against the promises of the Most High? The Most High forbid. For if, if there uh, had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scriptures have concluded all under sin that the promise of faith of Yahweh Mashiach may be given to them that believe. There's a belief again. Right? So how are we going to talk about that belief? We talked about belief in the, in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, in the process of belief. You ain't going to believe if you ain't heard. How you going to hear without a preacher? How you going to have a preacher if he ain't sent? All right? The Most High is told, telling you the process of how he's going to be sent through the 144,000. All right? You're not going to be able to get around this. When you go into 2nd Ezra, right? 2nd Ezra chapter 2. Verse 35, it says, Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify of my Savior openly. Oh, receive the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him that have led you to the heavenly kingdom. Right? Remain appreciative. That's the lesson that we just did. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. Um, what's the number? What is the number? Which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, May be hollow, right? They be sanctified, hollow, made white, justified, all that. What? Through the through how? Through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shahamashiach, right? Verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people, whom I could not number. And they all praised the Lord with songs. <laughs> and in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he said, Crowned, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? And he answered, He said unto me, These be they that put off the mortal clothing, put on immortal, and have confessed, as a confession again, the name of the Most High, as the name of the Heavenly Father again, now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is that that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? And so he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiff, stiffly for the name of the Lord. Okay? And so we have to make sure that that commendation, that commendation is, is, is being received out there if we're in the Spirit. Be mindful of how you deal with the prophets of the Lord. Be mindful of how you deal with those vice regents that come and their representatives. They're representatives of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah speaking the word, man, for those who are ready to incline their ears. Those of you who are watching these videos and you're close to the prophets, and you're around the ministers and you say you believe, you better be mindful how you deal with his men. You better be mindful if you do believe in this thing 
how you're dealing with and how you're handling the men of the Lord. Be mindful of your thoughts. Be mindful of how you treat the Most High's men. They are extremely important towards salvation. You ain't going to just skip dealing with the prophets. The Most High didn't say that. He didn't say it was going to work like that. You ain't going to just skip around those men. Okay? And I could go, man, so many scriptures come to mind, we could go all day. But I know the point has been made, you know. The 144,000, the prophets of the Heavenly Father are extremely important. Most High's dealing with those men and sending salvation through those men. They are a part of that mediating body. They're in that court with Yahweh Shai. Dealing uh, for the behalf of the nation so we can come back into the glory, that immortality, that glory of the Heavenly Father, man. That's what the 144,000 are fighting for, man. Standing so stiffly. Following the land, whithersoever you're going, go with. Right? Extremely important administration. Okay? Be mindful of how you handle these prophets. You ain't just going to just get around them. You ain't skipping them. They are part of the program of the Most High. Okay? Call Hello Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim Rakah, Double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing the words sincerely and truth. Shallow one.